What the heck is the Polycade? So a few years ago, I remember this thing being on my radar and I totally forgot all about it. Yet somebody recently brought this up to me and mentioned it was on Indiegogo. And that, that began to confuse me a bit because I thought this was a project that came to fruition. And that led me down a whole bunch of different rabbit holes. There's some weirdness going on here, my friends. And I want to discuss it and talk about it with you guys today. So the Polycade currently on Indiegogo. It's a campaign, a project being done by Tyler Bushnell, the son of Nolan Bushnell, the co-founder of Atari. Pretty crazy stuff. This dude wanted to jump into it and make an arcade machine. There's a lot more to it than that. But like I said, this seemed very familiar to me. I looked into this before. So yeah, this was available on Kickstarter a few years ago. 2016 was the estimated delivery. And as I like to do with these weird little projects, only had 189 people back it. I like to look at the comments and just a couple years back, two years ago, what, 2018, 2017, you see a lot of comments here like, where the hell's my my product that I backed? Where is it? Why haven't I gotten it yet? And then I've seen a few people mention, oh, I got it. But then you know, it kind of fizzled out from there. I haven't really seen any new comments for a while here. When I looked at this this campaign, I it, it brought back memories of why this was on my radar before. And this project right here is totally different than the one on Indiegogo. And that that's where some of this begins. But then what's on Indiegogo is already available in a different form elsewhere. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. You go to their website, information all over the place. This is a, a confusing mess. I would imagine for a lot of people, but this machine right here was being run by a Raspberry Pi 2 and the prices were just kind of ridiculous for what it was. Woodworkers kit, all of the ingredients to build it your freaking self for $600. Like, okay, I guess. Did, did you get a, did you get a, a monitor? I don't think so. $1,550. The, the retail was $1,950. You got I guess everything put together. I'm not paying two thousand, uh, two thousand or fifteen hundred for a Raspberry Pi arcade machine. It's not even a full machine. It's like a wall-mounted type thing, right? Pretty crazy stuff with what they were offering there. But like I said, the Indiegogo campaign that they have here, they've got like celebrity endorsements and whatnot. <laughs> it's pretty nuts. This is a different project, but it looks to be the same per almost. I mean, it's a similar thing. It's not exactly the same. They offer it in a few different ways build your own, play it on your PC with their easy peasy software, get their little machine, their console, the Polycade 2600. Yes, homage to the Atari 2600. Get the two-player arcade machine or the four-player arcade machine. And some of these, obviously the one doing it on your own with your own PC, that's going to be whatever specs you have. But between these other options, they have varying specs. Prices here, a little ridiculous when you really dig into what you're getting. So let's move on. Bring your own PC. Do it yourself. This controller on their website is listed as two hundred freaking dollars. All Sanwa parts, wireless as well. But I don't know about that. Two hundred dollars. Obviously, this controller right here with the Polycade logo looks like an eight bit though controller, and that's because it is. So obviously, they got a little partnership to get it branded. Okay. So there is that high quality, simple. We don't need to read the uh, description for that. We know what it is. So they have their their software. And it just, it's fairly basic looking stuff. Nothing amazing. Looks like it works. But the way they're doing this, with this being, it's just a PC. That's all it really is, is they're going to have their own store. Looks like they have some licensing deals with like Taito and a few others to get some classic games. And then modern hits. They're calling, you know, all these, there's only indie games on here. They're calling those modern hits. And I'm not disputing that, but that's all they're showing here is indie games that's gonna be available on their stores. Is there gonna be other stuff? I don't know, but then the biggest thing you start seeing like Street Fighter and a few other games, that's because it's a freaking PC and you could play Steam games on it. That's all this is. And then they advertise pricing available on Steam. That, that fluctuates quite a bit, but yeah. Oh, you play Mortal Kombat 11, obviously through Steam, not through your own proprietary thing. So you gotta really know what you're getting yourself into if you're interested in something like this. And look, here's all their people you already know love the Polycade. Snoop Dogg, he's all up in it. Playing that thing right next to his Xbox Series X refrigerator, right? Steve Aoki, Keenan Allen, Chief Keef, Ludacris, Lil John, they all up in it, man. They all up in it. 
this is one of the things that started making me dig more into this thing is seeing like this quote. Last week, my nine-year-old son told me the only good thing about the weather is we get to play a lot of polycade together. That doesn't sound like shit a nine-year-old would say. Stop with the fake-ass quotes. Ryan E. from Florence, Kentucky. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> like, I always think that shit's funny. Like, you know, even if this dude did say that, like, or did, like, this is a real guy, Ryan E. You know, they ain't no nine-year-old said that shit. Give me a break, dude. Maybe they did. Maybe I'm being a little too, uh, you know, critical, I guess. But whatever, man. Whatever. But that that started leading me to... Oh, so this thing's already available? Like, they're advertising this PC-based system, but these people are talking like they already have it. So that led me down a whole other rabbit rabbit hole, you know? A bunch of holes all over the place, right? Look at this thing. The, the controllers are swappable, so if you buy, like, those $200 arcade sticks, bloop, bloop, you could pop them in and out. It's modular. I kind of like that. I ain't gonna lie. But here you go. They always got to show the people having a blast sitting around playing this thing, all different controllers. They're just showing you what's up, dude. Here's the little system. Now, here's the specs. Like I said, some of the arcade machines they have have similar specs, and then one of them or two of them is different. We'll get more into that. So this little bitch right here, the Polycade 2600, has an AMD Ryzen 3 3200G powerful CPU. It's an APU with, it's got the graphics processor and the CPU, and the AMD Ryzen 3 3200G, you could find for between 75 to to $100. It's cheap. They say you could play modern favorites, all sorts of crazy shit, like de demanding modern games. That's not exactly true. Sure, you could play like Grand Theft Auto V and whatnot, but you have to have your, your, your expectations in check. You're not going to be playing like whatever the most recent games are that came out within this year at like high specs with this Ryzen 3. A lot of people do like those CPUs for like, Budget builds to make emulation machines like LaunchBox, uh, you know, CoinOps, Hyperspin type setups because they're just so cheap and they're decent for what they are. Eight gigs of RAM. I'm not sure like what kind of RAM they're using exactly because the information is confusing that they have out there. 240 gigabyte SSD all day, every day, $25, $30 for that size SSD. You're looking at like right now, a couple hundred dollars in parts for this five to $600 console, uh, get a PlayStation 5 or a Series X or get the Polycade. Mm, choice is yours, right? Expandable, obviously, because it's a PC. That's what it is, it's a PC. When you look at the Ryzen 3, these are the specs here. You know, they are unlocked. You can overclock things and whatnot. They're decent. I'm not knocking this, this processor. It has the Radeon Vega 8 graphics. The other one that they offer, the other machines that they offer have the AMD Ryzen 5 3400G with the Vega 11. Definitely a little higher specs on this thing. It's, you know, quite a bit better than the previous version that we looked at, the Ryzen 3. You're, you're going to get, you know, comparable performance, a little bit boosted from that previous version, but this is not going to be the greatest thing ever. You're not, like I said, going to be playing all the latest releases at high, you know, the specs as far as you know graphics and all that kind of stuff goes it's nice like i said for a budget build but for a system that's saying like hey demanding games mm, nah, nah, not exactly not exactly and this one right here you could find them for around 150 bucks so keep keep that in mind oh we're we're in the wrong place we're in the wrong place here we go so here's the machines right very customizable they got like magnets you could put on this damn thing <laughs> which I thought was kind of interesting. As you see, the the Wallcade Lite, it's got that 3200G in there. And then what else do we have? You have another one, the Lux. And I didn't understand this. So this has the Ryzen 5 and one terabyte SSD. So you 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 boost it up from like where they were at with the previous version with uh, between 50 to $100 more in components upgrade you know the upgraded cost as far as what these components cost and i noticed there's like a webcam in there why i don't know i guess to stream or something or to chat with people i i, I don't know i don't know I, and i'm not sure what what camera that is but we're looking at maybe a couple hundred dollars more in component cost for this version but this version compared to the light version that we just looked at is double the price You'll see the price in a second. We'll talk more about that in a moment. 
And then they do have the, oh, there's the magnetic decals. I kind of actually like that. That's, that's a neat idea. That's a neat idea. And then you get down here to the squad cade, the four player machine. This thing, same specs as the previous model with the Ryzen 5 and one terabyte. Now, yeah, I mean, they don't look like bad machines, but they're just so damn expensive. They have these stretch goals, which I think is ridiculous. More emulators. You're telling me that if we unlock these achievements, you're going to give me emulators for Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, Sega CD on a PC. Did you develop these emulators or did you just jack them? Did you license them? Why can't I just add those emulators myself when it's just a PC to begin with? I don't need your achievement to put these emulators on there. They saying they're just going to download them for you. And that's worth the hassle of unlocking these achievements. I'll freaking know. They have all the information there to unlock all this shit. <sighs> Whatever, right? Easy, fast sign in for up to four players. Local multiplayer, obviously, right? So where's the pricing? Let's get back up to the pricing. Let's see what we're looking at here. That squad cade, four grand, but regularly it's six thousand dollars. The Lux is $3,000, normally $4,000. Out of their minds, dude. The light, like I said, the, a couple hundred dollars more, and that's kind of being, you know, giving them, giving them a little more credit than what they probably deserve. A couple hundred dollars more as far as upgrades, and you're double the freaking price. That's stupid, dude. Give me a break, $1,500 or $3,000. Why couldn't I, if I could, I could just buy this one and, and get the, the the Ryzen 5 and put it in there and have pretty much the same machine. Come on, and, and add a hard drive, whatever, dude. Like, I, I think that's ridiculous. 500 for the machine that has like $130 worth of components plus the motherboard, whatever motherboard they're using, right? You could finance, you put a deposit and finance this stuff. But I, I just thought that was nuts because then when you when you start searching for this, you see things like this, the wall mounted arcade with a little camera on there, don't know which version this one is. Doesn't say light or lux. Almost four grand, but this one is completely different. It's available to purchase now. Windows 10. And then you have uh, the graphics card, GeForce GTX 1650, an older graphics card. CPU, AMD A8 9600, one terabyte SSD. You could get this bitch now and get it shipped to you. And it's different than what they're offering here. Like, this is kind of crazy with everything they're doing with this. And then when you go to their website, you know, they have the pre-sale listed. When you click on any of this stuff, it goes to the Indiegogo. But they make it confusing because, okay, they have the prices. They're kind of crazy. You, you know, they also have stuff coming soon. You can get the software for free. Just do it yourself. Like, why would you put your software out there? Because they know what this is. It's just a PC. Like, and the main appeal is you could play Steam on it. I could play Steam on the PC I'm recording on right now. The hell's, what the hell is you talking about, right? I mean, the, the appeal would be getting an all-in-one machine, but these prices are ridiculous. Those DIY options coming soon, $200 controller. When you get down here and you click tech specs, it gives you those technical specifications for what was listed on that, that website where you could buy it now. So this is all crazy, dude. With the people on Kickstarter wondering where the hell their shit was a couple years ago, with them on Indiegogo getting $126,000 with 121 back, that's not a lot of people, man. That's the thing that scares me with these campaigns with these big machines is when there's that much money involved and very little backers just because the price of the, the product is so expensive. Like, are they really going to haul ass to get this product out there to you? I mean, it already exists, so I don't see why not, but that's kind of where I'm at with these, these Indiegogo things. I've never backed an Indiegogo. I'm very skeptical with these things. I think they're shady for a lot of projects. I'm not saying all of them. I'm not even saying that this is shady. I'm just skeptical with what they're doing here, with this being a project that's already been realized multiple times. Now you just use Indiegogo as a pre-order campaign. This isn't really crowdfunding. This is like, hey, we already have this shit. Let's just change the specs out. And a lot of people like on the Kickstarter I seen were upset because the specs were changing. Just crazy stuff. Let me know what you guys think down below. Really do appreciate it. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye and boom.